Thanks to one of our viewers, we got our hands on a Cybertruck for a week, so be sure and stay tuned for that video. That's coming up on the Auto Buyer's Guide channel shortly. And we also have a Ford F-150 Lightning at the exact same time. So you know what video is also coming up soon on the channel? Yep, Cybertruck versus Lightning. But let's talk about some of the things I noticed first. This is sort of a first impressions video here because I haven't been able to drive this for very long, but obviously that's gonna be coming up this week with range tests, etc. So let's just talk about my initial impressions of the Cybertruck. Obviously styling is very personal. So I tend to prefer the more traditional truck style that we have over here on the Lightning, but I actually am really happy that that Tesla is going off in a different direction with the Cybertruck because it really gives the auto industry some vehicles with more personality and more flavor. As you approach the Cybertruck, you're really gonna notice that the roof line is not as tall as the Lightning right over here. And it's certainly not as boxy. That is gonna have an impact on rear seat headroom. The other thing you're gonna notice, I think, just looking around the Cybertruck is that it's been built by a company that hasn't built a truck before, but definitely did a lot of truck research. So there are some unconventional designs on the Cybertruck, certainly. Things like this power tonneau cover. I really like the idea of the power tonneau cover. It works significantly more smoothly than the one that we had in our Rivian R1T. The power cover blocks the rear window. So when the power cover is closed, you can't see out that rear window. You're gonna be depending on just the camera back here. And this camera is used for essentially everything. The safety systems, also for that camera view. We don't have multiple cameras in the back like we find in more traditional EVs or trucks like the Lightning over there. But we have things in here that we don't find in typical trucks, like a really well thought out bed lighting system. I am constantly surprised that we don't have more bed innovation in traditional trucks like the Lightning over there. They may have one or two lights, but not a nice big light bar that really helps light up not just the front of the cargo area, but the back as well. We also have a composite bed here. So this is pretty similar to what we find, say, in something like a Toyota Tacoma, etc., where we have plastic lining, so you don't need a separate bed liner. That's a really nice touch. And the bed is very, very square. Depending on the dimension, it is, however, smaller than the one in the F-150. Then we have an under bed storage area right there. That's kind of a practical touch. We also have a power tailgate in the back, but it's just powered down. It's not power up. I actually have to say that uh, power down is not the mode that I would prefer. I would prefer if it just had power up and manual down. As far as the lights go, most of the lights are in this big light bar running right there just above that tailgate. The middle part of the light bar is of course part of the tailgate, that is not. And then down here we have the uh, marker lights there on the outside and then we have backup lights right there in the middle, right by that license plate. Looking at the back end, you'll notice that the bumper actually sticks quite far down. We have the true bumper section here, and then this is really more of just the, the aerodynamic treatment to help airflow across the rear a little bit more gently. You'll notice that under there, we have a pretty flat bottom to the vehicle. And that's partially due to the fact that we don't have a spare tire in the Cybertruck, something that we do find over there in that Lightning. Over here, we have power outlet ports, nice handy feature. We get a pretty big onboard inverter, and that's why they give us this large format 240 volt outlet there. We also get some 20 amp 120 volt outlets on that side, and some cargo tie downs there on the bottom. You'll notice that we have tie downs not just here, but also up there in the middle of the bed where I think that they're actually a little bit handier than some of the positions in regular half ton trucks. And we have a very similar sort of utility belt style locking rail on the side to the one that we find in the Ineos Grenadier that we have as a long-term vehicle here. Power tonneau cover, obviously power closes as well. Charge port is right over here. Now to some of the quirks I noticed. Uh, this did not get shipped with the aero covers that you've probably seen. Those aero covers match the shape of this little outline on the tire, but due to some initial problems with that, this vehicle just was not shipped with the covers. So we don't get a cover here for the hub or anything. It just has no cover at all, at least at the moment. This particular model is the Foundation Series. Now let's go into the cabin and see what this looks like. You can see that we have different seat control designs from what we've seen before. On the inside, we have a dashboard design that's pretty similar to the rest of the Tesla lineup, but obviously tweaked for the truck. Instead of a yoke steering wheel like we find in the S and the X, we have sort of a rectangular steering wheel with the drive-by wire system, of course. Now, moving up from there, we have that really small rear view mirror, and then we don't have a full glass roof. So instead, we have this fabric section right up here. There's a structural element underneath that. And then we have the large glass pane for the front, this big glass pane right here up above the rear passenger's heads. 
And then of course the small rear window there that again you can't see out of unless that tonneau cover is open. The rear seat design, it's pretty attractive and it's also pretty roomy. So with this front seat adjusted for me at six feet tall, you can see I have quite a lot of leg room left. The seat bottom cushion is a decent height off the ground for adults, so I have a decent amount of leg support there. They designed the rear bench to be sort of like three different bucket seats. So we have these bolsters in the middle here for the center section and the outboard seating position. But you notice they've defined them a bit more with the piping that we get in the outboard seats that we don't find in that center seat section. Headroom is definitely lower than we find in the average half-ton truck in the U.S., but it's still pretty decent. For me, at six feet tall, I have, you know, maybe about three-quarters of an inch of headroom left. I can feel that my hair is just barely brushing the glass, especially if my head is back there towards the head restraint, then it's actually touching this little fabric section of the roof there. Also, the side is a little bit further in than something like the Lightning or a Silverado or the upcoming electric trucks from Ram, and that's just due to the aerodynamic profile of the vehicle. But on the shoulder area here, it actually feels notably wider wider than I had expected. And that's because the Cybertruck is definitely wide, so there's a lot of room right here between the side of the door and your arms or your elbow. The big central LCD functions very similar to other Tesla models, but obviously it's been customized specifically for the Cybertruck. We have the same sort of classic separation here between the driving section right over here where you'd find park and reverse if this was not plugged into its charge door. You'd have your speedometer, etc. right there as well. And then over here on this side, we have the various controls in the system or of course the full moving map display if I go over to the navigation system. Uh, we'll go ahead and cancel it. You can see the navigation display right over there. Uh, we obviously have Sentry Mode, Bluetooth, Spotify, all that usual stuff built in there. A slightly different energy screen to what we see in some of the other Tesla models. Most of this is the same basic concept, just things that have been slightly adjusted specifically for the Cybertruck. For instance, if we go back in here and then we take a look at, uh, I don't know, the uh, towing and hauling, we'll go over to that mode. We have the trailer brake controller over here on screen and you'll use the right scroll wheel to activate the trailer brake control. We can also adjust the adaptive regenerative braking for that trailer alarm right there, trailer light test, kind of a nice touch right there. But again, a lot of the features and functions are very similar to the rest of the lineup. There are a few exceptions, of course, and one of them is that we don't have full self-driving available yet in the Cybertruck. Um, and uh, over here, you'll notice that's, that's why that's grayed out right there. And we don't have all of the same feature set necessarily for some of the vehicle functions in this software version as the rest of the Tesla lineup. We do have or still have traffic aware cruise control. Uh, we can have the speed limit set there, uh, offset as you'd assume, speed limit warnings, all that kind of stuff going on there. Uh, and then over here on the steering wheel, we have a lot of the same functionality that we find in the S and the X, where we have the turn signals over here on the steering wheel rather than a stock. There's actually no stock at all right there. We then have the headlight control there, some roller controls that will perform various functions depending on the mode you're in in the software, some cruise control buttons over here. That's the cruise control activation button right there, windshield wiper button, voice command button there. This button over here takes us to the camera layout, kind of a nice touch. And because of that no rear window setup, if you were driving, you would actually get a rear view camera, small camera display over here that's rearrangeable on the screen. I'll show you that in the full review. One thing I think that I would like to see, however, is for that same camera readout to actually be put up over here on that really small rear view mirror there that's particularly small, not overly useful even when the tonneau cover is open. In the center console, we have our wireless charging area for your smartphone, two big cup holders there, nice big center armrest, but certainly a little bit smaller than the average half-ton truck. It's a little bit more mid-sized truck, I would say, in terms of the storage capacity, but not the width of the interior. You'll notice that if I look over here to the passenger seat, there is quite a lot of distance between the seat and that door. So again, the cabin has a really airy feel, but some of the uh, positions in here have been pushed a little bit closer together. So the seats in the front are a little bit closer together than you'd find in the average half-ton truck, even though the distance across from one door to the other is pretty, pretty similar. Uh, we have a pretty flat floor there, as you'd expect in a vehicle that was designed from the ground up to be an electric vehicle. Lots of storage going on right there in the middle. You can see that's a really, really big area there for you can uh, put your bags, laptop bags, shopping bags, whatever you wanted to put there. And then there's a better look at those seat controls. Also, some room under the seats. You can see that 
instead of having a seat that just really abruptly ends there and then having a big bump up like we find in some EVs, that goes all the way back there, nice and flat. So if you're the kind of person that likes to take your feet under the seat, that's gonna be great. And for rear passengers, they can put their feet quite far under the seats because of how high it is off the ground. Then we have the Cybertruck logo right there on the sills, storage in the doors right there. Mechanical release for the door, that's the emergency release there, and that's the electronic release because these are electronically opening doors. So much like the Mustang Mach-E, you press on this button here, then the door pops out right like that. Then you have to open it, you just grab somewhere on the door. Now, clearly, a lot of folks have been talking about the fingerprints, lots of fingerprints, obviously, all around the Cybertruck, but this one doesn't seem to have any rust issues on it, as some people have noted. The rear doors, they open in exactly the same way, right like that. Now, clearly, you can use the Tesla card or the Tesla app to interact with the car. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open the Tesla app on my phone. Go ahead and say yes to its little warnings there. Then we're gonna go ahead and open the front trunk so we can explore that. Uh, yes, some features like this are available in some of the other electric trucks, but I think Tesla has integrated some of those connectivity features in the phone a little bit better. Here you'll notice the one thing that really surprised me when we finally saw the actual Cybertruck, it's the size of the front trunk. It actually is significantly smaller than the one in the Lightning. Uh, since this video is not about the Lightning, I'm not gonna talk too much about it but I do wanna show you the difference in the front trunk. This is significantly deeper, it's not quite as wide, and then we have a little bit of extra storage right there under that area. I think this front trunk is a little bit better thought out, but there's logically a reason for this being so large. There's also some AC outlets there in the corner. The reason this is so large is because the Lightning was designed for a big V8 engine to live under its hood, and this has the exact same body sizes and proportions as the regular F-150. They did not decide to make the front end more aerodynamic than we find in the regular F-150. And if we go over here to the Cybertruck, you'll notice that one of the reasons this front trunk is smaller is because the front end of the vehicle is quite a bit lower to the ground. It's actually you know, maybe almost a, a foot lower to the ground than the very front end of that F-150. So the difference mainly comes down to packaging. Where Tesla chose to put some of the critical vehicle systems that both vehicles have, chargers, motor control systems, etc., where they've chosen to locate them here in the Cybertruck, and of course the Cybertruck's slightly smaller dimensions in some critical ways versus that Lightning right over there. Now let me know what you think about that, and of course stay tuned for our full video on this particular Cybertruck. Again, the Foundation Edition, that is coming up on the Auto Buyer's Guide channel really soon. Let us know what you all think about that, and of course, stay tuned. See y'all later.